Hi everyone, to my subscribers, good morning, back again. Today I'm going to deal with another physicist. <laughs> I'm going to deal with another physicist now. I read about, I read their stuff, just to get to know what they think, get into their head you know so you have to get them a fair deal because you don't want to assume that's what they say and that's not what they say so you get their own books now this is this physicist is now now we're gonna look and see what this guy what this physicist said about the universe and what God said about the universe now And which one, which one pen ought to be correct? I already know the answer already, man. But it's just for you to see for yourself. Sean Corral is a theoretical physicist at California Institute of Technology. He has been awarded prizes and fellowships by the National Science Foundation, NASA, the Alfred P. Uh, Sloan Foundation, the David and Lucy uh, Picard Foundation, the American Physical Society, the American Institute of Physics, and the Royal Society of London. His most recent recent work, his most recent award was uh, Cogenium Fellowship in 2015. Is the author of from eternity to here and the particle at the end of the universe yeah about that so he's a theoretical physicist like Einstein <laughs> Einstein was the greatest theoretical physicist man but he he's another theory he's a, he's a theoretical physicist so this is on the origin of life meaning and, and the universe itself the big picture this is us. Um, this is his book. Gonna look on some other thing that he says, and then we're going to use God's word after. Now, I've seen, I've, I've watched him over the years. I've watched his debates against people like William Lane Craig. <laughs> some other guys uh, I watched some of his lectures you know and it's just like he's no better than Sabine Austin Fielder there's, there's a slight little difference though, like both of them are, are radical empiricists. Um, both of them are, uh, they are advocate not necessarily for science, but scientism. Yeah, there's a difference between science and scientism. Scientism is that, scientism believe that the science is the only way the only path to truth they don't give audience to any other even though in in order to understand the universe there hard to be an in, interdisciplinary an interdisciplinary approach that means different discipline approach you know, examine the universe and have their own say, their understanding, you know, not the science itself. You know, you have philosophers, you have chemists, you have theologians, and, um, but science want to dominate and take, take over, control everything, and think they are, you know, they are the, the legitimate, owner of the universe 
and what the universe is and everything about the universe right so that's what scientism is science is a tool that is used by science by scientists and they they understand the limitation they understand that there are certain things science cannot answer and will never answer but not scientism you know so difference between Sean and and us in fielder is that she has some weird um, belief that she's outside science she likes to want she wants to talk about a lot of other stuff even though she this is she's the one that's say you know what if it's not if it's not if science doesn't put his empirical finger on it and say this is it it doesn't exist it, 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 it's it's unreal you know and yet she leave open to certain little things here and there even though she used the word un, uh, a, a unscientific or a scientific instead of unscientific um sean now is not into too much of these little uh weird uh, stuff that she talks about sometimes and you know uh say let me see Talk about life, for instance, our electrons, our electrons, conscious, our election. You know what is election already? Thing that spins around. I can't. Well, I can't. To the, a, a big illustration of what an a, 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 an atom is, and the electron spins around it inside there, the nucleus of it, the proteins, and. Um, can we create the universe or the universe think some all of these kind of panentheism you know and yet she pass herself off as one does you know I don't I don't give credence to anything whatsoever outside science but she has some is scientific belief there you know she might she might not say they're confirmed by science but she's still looking to them and address the issues when people ask about certain things you know but not sean but generally speaking they are i would say they're scientific they 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 are primary advocates of scientism or we sometimes they call it scientific naturalism nothing beyond there's nothing beyond the universe nothing all there is is the universe right nothing beyond it um you have scientists who not um not those who advocate scientism, but science. They, a lot of science scientists now is looking into a lot of, lot of things that are meta science. That is above science, the outside of the sphere of science and like metaphysics. They're examining um, the soul of the dead people, the near death experience, and all of these things. They, they, they sort of you know encroaching into these areas you know to see if science can verify anything here to understand because they themselves realize that these things actually exist it's just that you can't it cannot they cannot be explained by a scientific uh, method and uh, verified by a scientific method because they're beyond scientific tools 
you know what happened when a person you know in it's in um it's like in a coma or what happened after death and stuff yeah yeah i've seen it i've seen it looking into these things but a personal advocate for scientism wouldn't would would never waste time doing because there, there's nothing other than just matter energy space and time that's it don't come to me with nothing else now i'm gonna read something that from his book that's sean carl In his book on page 11, a broad ontology. So when we talk about ontology, we're talking about being, the being of a thing, the ontology of God, the ontology of energy. The broad ontology typically associated with atheism is naturalism. There is only one world, the natural world, exhibiting patterns we call the laws of nature. And uh, when it comes on to um, philosophy, that there are, for instance, law of causality, um, and um, the principle of sufficient reason, why there is something other than nothing, and all of these things, call. Carl? John Carl dismisses those things. Don't want to hear about those kind of stuff. As a, so let me continue. And which is discoverable by the methods of science and empirical investigation. There is no separate realm of the supernatural, spiritual or divine, nor is there any cosmic theo um, teleology that mean Design. Design. There's something they call teleonomy. Um, many uh, evolutionary biologists use that term instead of design. They, they, things just have an appearance of purpose and design, but it's not actually um, design and stuff like that. So... There is no separate frame. Now, when we talk about there is no separate frame, the universe is four dimension: time, matter, space, energy. All of this is a four dimensional, four dimensional universe we live in. But beyond a four-dimensional universe, there is another realm that are there's another realm that is not susceptible to scientific scrutiny. That's where d demons and angels and God and so on exist. That's where they dwell. So there is no separate realm of supernatural. It doesn't believe in supernatural occurrences. Um, no miracles. Um, no spiritual or divine. Nothing. Uh, nor is there any cosmic teleology. No design or transcendent purpose inherent in the nature of universe or in human life. See that? No, you don't have any purpose. I don't have any purpose. Nothing in the universe has any purpose. It's just uh, uh, the, the term that they use is just brute fact. The universe exists by brute fact, and it's. Unbelievable how can a person say that and, and look around you. The things that you do. 
even your own personal life as a physicist. You know, you don't have any purpose. You don't have any goal. So become a theoretical physicist, what was that? So it's something that happened for two seriously by random chance. Didn't you go to school and have that in mind, said I want to be a theoretical physicist? You wouldn't consider that as a purpose? A goal? And then in human life, human life has no purpose, it has no... The what and the why, why am I here and all of these type of philosophical questions is irrelevant to this guy. But we live in a real world and we know that what he's talking is not true. Life and consciousness do not denote essence distinct from matter. So there is no... There's no dualist, there, there no dualism, a property dualism, a substance dualism he's talking about here. Because substance dualism believe that the mind is not the brain and the brain is not the mind, but yet they correlate, they work together uh, very intricately and um, one affect the other. One survived death, the other dies. Only the mind su survived death, the brain dies and corrupt rot because if the mind is a part of the soul the non-empirical aspect the mention of a human being so there is no essence this thing from matter there are, they they are ways of talking about phenomena to emerge from the interplay of extraordinary complex system. So you hear talk about matter is so complex. Matter is very complex and um, that give rise to um, consciousness and other non-physical, like the soul, non-physical, uh, non-empirical entity. Um, so their ways are just, they're, they're just nuances. They're just different ways in talking about the same thing. Purpose and meaning in life arise through fundamental human acts of creation rather than being derived from anything outside itself. Everything within any, whatsoever happened within the universe is just a part of the natural, naturalistic process of the universe. Everything concerning you, me, everything. The universe dictates everything. Naturalism, naturalism is a philosophy of unity and patterns describing all of the, the reality as a seamless web. It does not concede to the law of causality. When you talk about patterns, why is this thing this way? What caused this thing to be and such and such like that? It just is terminology is just patterns. Patterns. So he he will be dismissive of the law of causality and stuff like that. The principle of sufficient reason. What is the reason for this? And stuff like that. Don't give credence to those those things. The universe is all that is and will be. No according to John Lennox naturalism is is self it's a, it's a self um, refuting concept. It's a self refuting concept. Because a statement that naturalism is the only part to truth is not even a scientific statement, that's a philosophical statement. 
So, in a sense, it's fallen on its own sword. It is similar to logical positivism. Nothing is true unless, if it cannot be empirical, empirically verified, it cannot be true. But that very statement itself cannot be scientifically verified. So therefore, it's not true. They always fall on their own sword, man. Always fall on their own sword. Logical posit positivism is a school of thought that operated during the 1920s within the circle of Vienna philosophers that include Alfred J. Ayer, Rudolf, Conarp, Herbert, Figl, I hope I pronounced that right, and, and Moritz Schellick. They took an, an time. These are these are these are some kind of word that they made up here. Never never seen this word before. And time to a physical stand and develop a principle of empirical verification by which all but tautologies and empirical statements are considered meaningless. The empirical verif verifiability are found in David Hume, empirical skepticism. You cannot do philosophy without reading something about David Hume's because his work plays an essential role in it. And, and philosophers kind of disagreed with one another over whether David Hume uh, uh, refutes a cause of you know, cause and effect within the universe and stuff like that. Um, Obviously, uh, for sure, he doesn't believe in miracles and stuff like that. But uh, logical positive, logical positivism, that by its own sword, the principle of empirical ver ver verifiability is not empirically verifiable because it's not subject to scientific scrutiny it's not a scientific statement it's a philosophical statement now listen this is what like scientific naturalism is all about similar to logical positivism this is what david hume says when we run over libraries persuaded of these principles what havoc must we make If we take in our hand any volume of divinity, probably the Bible, <laughs> or school of metaphysics, anything that transcends physical nature, like ontology with the subdiscipline of it, for instance, let us ask, does it contain any abstract reason concerning quality or number? No. Does it contain any experimental reasoning concerning matter of fact and existence? No. Then if, what he's saying, if you go into a library, any book you take up, and if it doesn't contain anything, if it, do, if it doesn't, any book that you take up, if, if it, if they, if there are more than one books, if they don't contain any abstract reasoning concern quality and number, you're talking about mat mathematics there. And um, it, it, if it doesn't contain it, anything about experimental reasoning concerning matter of fact and existence, this is where you talk about science, you know, physics, chemistry, and stuff like that. If, it, if that book or those books don't contain anything like that, this is what, this is what they say you should do with those books or, or that book. Commit that, commit it then to flames, burn it, for it cannot, or it, it, for it can contain nothing but sophistry and illusion. So then, uh, because of its empirical skepticism, so same thing, 
with uh, naturalism. If it doesn't, if a book does not contain all of these things, burn it. If anything, if it's not maths, if it's not chemistry, if it's not physics, burn that book. I don't want no book out of anything about philosophy, metaphysics, spirit, demons, angels, um, miracles, God, whatsoever. Continue with Sean Carl. Naturalism presents a hugely grandiose claim, and we have every right to be skeptical. When we look in, into the eyes of another person, it doesn't seem like what we are seeing is simply a collection of atoms, some sort of immensely complicated chemical reaction. We often feel connected to the universe in some way that transcends the merely physical, whether it's a sense of awe when we contemplate the sea or the sky or trench like rivers during meditation or prayer, or the feeling of love when we are close to someone we care about. The difference between a living being and an inanimate object seems much more profound than the way certain molecules are arranged. Just looking around, the idea that everything we see and feel can somehow be explained by impersonal law governing the motion of matter and energy seems preposterous. It is preposterous if you believe it, if that's the, if that's the position you hold. None of these things can't be explained by molecules or, or, or quantum fluctuation or, you know, and all of these things. These things are fundamentally outside of the sphere of science. And not because science can't give an account to them, make them irrelevant, make them non-existent. They are real. It is a bit of a leap in the face of all of our common sense experience, right? To think that life can simply start up out of non-life or that our experience of consciousness needs no more ingredients than atoms obeying the laws of physics. Carl, I'll tell you this. Conscious need, consciousness needs another ingredient. Nothing physical can give rise to it. Nothing physical. No, oh, it doesn't matter how, com how complicated the matter is. Can't give rise to consciousness. Consciousness even survived death. The death of your brain. Of equal importance appeals to transcendent purpose or a higher power seems to provide answer to question to some of the pressing why questions we humans like to ask. Why this universe? Why am I here? Why anything at all? Why anything at all? The principle of sufficient reason. Why is the universe here? Why does it exist? Why am I here? There is an explanation for everything. There is a cause. Everything that has a beginning has a, has a cause. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. The column argument. But no. Not into the naturalistic worldview. Not according to the scientific naturalism. So why this universe? Why am I here? Why anything at all? Naturalism by contrast simply say those aren't the right question to ask. How do you mean it's not the right question to ask? 
You can't tell me that, man. Matter of fuck, you can't tell anybody. Everybody has the right to ask any question they want to ask. And it's common sense that lead people to ask questions, being curious and inquisitive. Why is it this way? Why, why is this this? Why we have this instead of that? It's a part of all the human, part of being a human being. We want to learn, we want to know. Things just, this just so explanation or this brute fact explanation. It's not an explanation. It's a, well, according to him, um, nothing needed an explanation. What we have is the universe and naturalistic laws and molecules and proteins and electrons. And the, these are the things that is responsible for everything. What's going on in the universe and on our life and everything. All boils onto that. These are fundamental to scientism. And they are the right question to ask? What? It's a lot to swallow and not a view that anyone should accept and questioningly. Of course. Of course. You have to ask questions. We were made to ask questions. To figure things out. To learn. That's what you do in your physics. That's what you do in the theoretical physics. You you try to answer a lot of questions about that's why that's how Einstein come up with general general and special theory of relativity and uh, and all of these things because he questioned things and examined things and then he used maths and and he was is he, he, he's he's the greatest man. He's the greatest. He's the greatest theoretical physicist. And I guess you would like to be like him. So in life, we ask, we should ask questions because we want to know, we want to learn. Naturalism is not an obvious, the fault way to think about the world. The case in, in, in his favor has built up gradually over the years a consequence of your relentless quest to improve our understanding of how things work at a deep level, but there's still work to be done. We don't know how the universe began. Yeah? The reason why you don't know is because your, your own worldview cannot account for it. And you refuse to step outside of naturalism and look elsewhere. Follow the evidence wherever it leads. That's what that's a scientific maxim. You follow wherever the evidence leads, you follow it. Do not deny it. And this is a problem within science. They have their presumption and the presupposition. And if it's lead, and if it's um leading away from what they their preconception of things. They turn a blind eye and say, no, 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 I don't want to go down there because this is going to lead me in a hero that I don't want to go, I don't want to be, and I don't want to accept it. You know, you know what that hero is? The sound of the word G-O-D made it. So we don't know how the universe began. Yeah, I know, Mr. Theoretical Physicist. And there are the scientists to tell us where the universe began. It's not only... Uh, there are a lot of scientists believe that the universe had a big... What about the Big Bang? Cosmology. What about the Big Bang cosmology? The Big Bang co cosmology believe, is a belief that the universe had a beginning. But nobody can tell you what was before the beginning. The, 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 the laws of physics won't allow any scientist to be, go beyond to go beyond the singularity. The laws of physics breaks right down before it reach the singularity. So they don't know what was at that point. Even seconds, quadrillion to four seconds before the universe explode into existence according to them. They can't give an account. That that infinitesimal 
moment before it explodes. Boom! I can't explain that. Stephen Hawkins want to don't, don't like the beginning of don't like to talk about the beginning of the universe. So he, he, he come up with some creative fudge factor, you know, to, to, to let the beginning of the universe disappear. Because the beginning of the universe, and, and I think he talk about some kind of mathematical law. They just don't want to say God created the universe, so they, come, they will use anything, anything. To say that's what you that what give rise to the universe or cause the universe to be. We don't know how life began. What? I know. A lot of a lot of people know. We don't know how life bega began and how consciousness arose. Conscious, a matter of a consciousness, or you word it. To, Consciousness was not a rose. Consciousness was endowed. It was endowed by God himself. And we certainly haven't agree, have not agree on the best way to live in the world as good human beings. We do. The naturalistic need to make the case that even without actually having these answers yet, their worldview is still by far the most likely framework in which we will eventually find them. That's why we are here. That's what we are here to do. But you contradict yourself here. If that's the reason why you're here to find this question, that's purpose. That's purpose, Carl. You're here for a reason. To find answer to these questions that science can answer. And, and you insist and you believe. You adamantly believe. That by a naturalistic worldview, you're going to find answer to these questions. And these questions are not, can, cannot be scientifically verified. How are you going to answer this question, Mr. Carl? How are you going to answer these questions? You will never, ever answer this question by your scientific naturalism. You've got to step outside of that. you got to step outside of that to answer these questions. And that's why and this is what we're talking about. That's what scientism is all about. They do not sign those who who are advocates of scientism do not and refuse to acknowledge the limitation of science. They think science can answer everything. They scientize everything. And that is ludicrous. You live in a world where you experience so many, so much things. You love your wife. Explain that scientifically. Mr. Carr, you love your wife. Explain that scientifically. Verify that by empirical, any empirical data, any empirical experimentation you want to carry out. Verify that somehow. Tell me. Explain it to me. I was reading a book by one of my favorite debater, John Lennox. He's another great Christian apologist and debater. Take on those uh, big giants, those giants of uh, of um science and uh of science that opposes 
Christianity, you know, the Christian God, you know, he, he takes them on. In his book, God's Undertaker as Science Buried God, You see, I'm open-minded. I learn from a lot. I read Sean Carr's book. I read Sabina Sophia's. I don't. I don't read only read Christian books. I read everything. I'm open-minded to everything. And if it doesn't make sense, man, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give my critique. Right. So one. So uh, here he gives this guy, I think he's Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell was a mathematician, scientist too. Atheist, didn't believe in God. This is what he's saying. These are some of the things that he himself admit that science cannot answer. Is the world divided in mind and matter of soul? What mind? What is mind? What is matter? Is mind subject to matter or is it possessed by independent powers as to universe any unity or purpose? Is it evolving towards some goal? Are these are there really laws of nature or do we believe in them only because of our, our innate Love of order. For 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 Sean, no. No. Universe has no unity and purpose. It is evolving towards some goal. Is it evolving towards some goal? Are there really laws of nature or do we believe in them only because of our innate love? of order is man what he seems to the astronomer a tiny lump of impure carbon and water impotently crawling on a small unimportant planet or is or is he what he appears to Amit? is there a way of living that is noble and another that is base or are all ways of living merely futile to such question no answers can be found in the laboratory these are metaphysical meta scientific and philosophical religious questions only these discipline can answer these questions that's what i'm telling you it has to be the approach to understand reality is an interdisciplinary approach not just one discipline want to domineer and suppress the others and say so you don't know any you don't know any all of you are ignoramuses we know what the universe is all about There is an efficient cause of the universe. And it's not cosmic evolution. It was God himself. Powerful being was a will and intention. There's a purpose for the universe. There's a purpose for it. And you have what is called the so you have the efficient cause this is god and his instrumental cause and what is the instrumental cause of the universe the word of his power he speak it into existence and it comes not a magician or a wizard as some people comment in the sky with his withered uh, wizardry and his magic wand working magic.
only God, supernatural, powerful being, has enough. Uh, he is, he is God Himself. Is a, is a, is a sufficient reason. He is the unmove mover, the uncaused cause of the universe. And the material cause, the material cause is energy, time, space, Sorry. energy, time, space, and matter. The universe has a beginning and it has a goal. It has a terminus equal and it has a terminus ad quem, the goal. The formal cause of the universe is like, you know, when you're, when you're designing a house, you have a, this is the formal cause, which means the design, the design, the design, the design of your, of the universe is right now. As we speak, is the idea of God comes from the mind of God. Any talk about Aunt Matilda cake? You know, Aunt Matilda cake is a woman who bake a cake. You put all you know. You know those who know to bake make, bake cake. Now all the ingredients in the cake, you can get several scientists to come and check out the cake. Your nutrition, you have the nutritionist, you have the biochemist, you have the chemist, you have the physicist, you know, and um, to, to check out all of the ingredients and all of these things at the molecular level, the fundamental particle, you have the mathematician. Uh, and that half for the elegant, elegant equation to describe the behavior of these particles. All of these different scientists will play a role in, in um, checking out the material, the ingredient of the cake, and can tell you, you know, what what um, atomic molecules and all of these things and particles and 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 all of, about all of the things that make up the physical cake itself. But why did she make the cake? Why did she make it? No man, not one of these scientists could answer this question. The purpose, the purpose of she making the cake cannot be answered by any scientist. The only, the only way you can know the reason why she made the cake and purpose, she has to tell you. She has to tell you. That's a, that's a good illustration you use against people, scientists who just believe that all this universe is just a brute fact. There's no explanation for it. There is no term, terminus ad quo. There is no terminus ad quem. There is no beginning and there is no end. There is, it just is. It's always there. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's to made for the Aristotelian concept because Harris started to believe that the universe was eternal. Right? And even though contemporary modern science prove Aristotle wrong, they seem to go back to the Aristotle model of the universe. Now, this is what God said. God said in Hebrew 11, verse 2, by faith we understand that the universe was formed by faith. No scientist would ever explain the beginning of the Big Bang, what, what they hold to Christian or hold to the Big Bang. 
but at least the Big Bang tells us that universe is not eternal. It has a beginning. But the problem for scientists, what or who caused this explosion? Now, to understand, that's why they can't, they, they, that's why they cannot and they will never find what was there before the universe because it requires fate. It requires metaphysics. It requires meta science. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed. At God's command. It was formed by God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. A lot of people interpret this to mean the subatomic particle. What it was made out of. You can't see it. The things that make up the universe, these subatomic particles, you're talk, talking about um, quarks, you're talking about um, string theory. Uh, and now, you thought string, string theory would answer the question of the fundamental basis of the universe. Now you have quantum wave function. Quantum wave function. Very delicate, very mysterious and it seems like it does that 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 realm is very hairy it seems like it does it's, it's sensitive to observers it's sensitive to intrusion so so they can't even explain and tell exactly what is at that fundamental level because particle seems to behave erratically seems to behave weird when they examine at that examine at that level to see what those particles are and what they're doing and all of these things. Wave become particle, particle become wave. Some superposition of particle, but they, they, they just everywhere at the same time and, and then it just change. So the, the, this is talking about quantum mechanics. So by faith, we understand that the universe was created by God. Nothing naturalistic. He's the one who was there all along before the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang. He was the one who was there all along before the Big Bang. He didn't cause a Big Bang, but this is a scientific explanation. And even though the Big Bang is it, it's a kind of it was a, a reasonable concept. It was it was it came to be, to be given that name out of um a, a, a kind of joke or something like that. It was not they sit down and say we're going to call this this event a big bang, you know. It came about fortuitously, in a kind of derogatory way, you know. But that's uh that's a scientific, and not all scientists believe the big bang keep that in mind not all of them everything you can, everything you can everything you can think of within the scientific community not all scientists physicists theoretical physicists and uh, are what they don't believe they don't agree upon a lot of stuff so in isaiah let's go to isaiah 40 Isaiah 45 18 says For this is what the Lord says He who created the heavens and he is God He who fashioned and made the earth He founded it He did not create it to be empty but he formed it to be inhabited. He formed it to be inhabited by man and animals and every living thing you can think of.
God made the universe, man. God made the earth. And he, and he put life on it. The Bible don't, doesn't know anything about Abiogenesis. Bible knows something, knows everything about biogenesis. Life comes from pre existing life. That's what it's all about. God is life, the prince of life. And every life came forth from God Himself. Not by blind, purposeless chance and chemical processes over billions and trillions and quadrillion years. There's this question guy that I watched. He was with Dr. Dame, Dr. James Thor was having a, um, I think he was doing a lecture about the molecules because the member is organic chemist. And there's another Christian guy there. He was a Christian, but he seems to believe in the, in evolution to a degree. And he believed that you will, we will see, I believe that he will see um life the macro evolution where probably crocodile evolved from a monitor lizard that in that in that way that's what that, that's what macro evolution is all about he believed that that we that will eventually happen, even if it have to take quadrillions of lot of um, time. You believe that you will not accept that it will. It's impossible. It will never happen. There is no evidence of macro evolution, but there is evidence of micro evolution that is variation within a species. Every kind is created of its own kind. A dog come from dog, not wolf. Wolf come from wolf. Lion from lions, cheetah from cheetah. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says. No scientist can convince me otherwise. And in Psalms, let's see now Psalms 19 Psalms 19 says the heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim the work of his hands day after day they pour forth speech night after night they reveal knowledge they pour forth speech they, they not that you literally hear a voice but it's so self-evident it's so self-evident so this is poetry so day after day they pour forth speech night after night they reveal knowledge fingerprint of god is everywhere the evidence of god is everywhere it's conspicuous it is universal it's abundantly clear yet their voice goes out in all the earth everywhere God revealed himself through natural theology, through the universe. God revealed who he is through the universe. His power through the universe. His wisdom through the universe is omnificient. His, his incredible, infinite, creative power, creative genius. Displayed through the created things. Scientists says science is impossible if god is in the picture but no not even james Thor, world-class scientists agree james Thor said when i look at the things when i look at the molecules and all of these things that i'm studying i said this is what god created whoa ah oh, this is how we did it that's what science is all about you study the underwork of god and you're and you get you get become you get heart struck. Your mind's blown because it cannot. We talk about irreducible complex things and specified complexity and information and all of these things that in biological lives, even the law of the universe, the laws come from lawgiver. 
They don't just appear from nowhere. There's no such thing as spontaneous generation. It's a violation of Newton's first law. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. So this is a poetic description of how the sun when it comes up. As how we use uh, phenomenological uh, way of speaking about the sunrise and the sunset. And, it, and so like the heavens, God pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and like a, a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Oh, man. That's the power. The power, the power of God. Let's go to seal, seal this off now with scripture. Let me seal off. Use the scripture to, to conclude this thing. In Romans 1, it says, I'm going to read from verse uh, 19. Since what may be known about God is plain to them. That's what I'm talking about. God is self-evident. So I don't need to prove anything. For me to try to prove something that is self-evident is would be superfluous and redundant. It's already clear to everyone why, why I try to do it. What am I trying to do? It's there. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God had made it plain. God had made it conspicuous to every man that he exists within his creation. Abundant evidence all over. The complexity, the beauty, the power, the aesthetics, the wisdom. God is incredibly, infinitely wise and powerful to create all these things. The biological code, the code that make you, you, um, and in every living things, make the, the, the not even a quantum computer that man want to build will ever come close to that. There's nothing man will ever build that will come close to anything that God made. Nothing, not even the smallest creature you can see with an electron microscope. No man will ever build anything close to it. This is God, intellectual property. And then science came on the scene and want to plagiarize it. You want to take away God, intellectual property and credit it to blind forces and chance. Are you crazy? How would you like to make something and somebody take it away and say and, and, and throw it outside and say, you know what? Is the overnight, you know, the temperature and, and, and all of that and uh, the condensation and then it come to be. How would you take that? You'll, you'll tell that guy says he's out of his mind. You want it, it should be institutionalized right now. Put on, put on, put on a straight jacket on him right now and institutionalize him. That's what you would say. But why would you say that to God? Why, when people say this thing, you won't say that to them? For since the creation of the world, God is God's invisible qualities. His omni, his his, his omnificence, his creative ability and creative genius, his wisdom, his knowledge. His understanding, because the Bible said he created the world by his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. His eternal power, and his eternal power, omnipotence, 
It requires omnipotence to create all of these things. Infinite knowledge. His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that the people are without excuse for although they know God, they need to glorify him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking become futile and their foolish heart was darkened. You see that? You see what the scripture says? The Bible don't play around. You know? The Bible does call things what it is, describe things as how it is. The Bible don't play around. The Bible don't cut shortcut in anything. Straight to the point as an arrow. I have no concern about anybody's sensitivity or sensibilities. It is very clearly seen. The existence of God, my friend, is extremely conspicuous to everyone. It is self-evident. It is self-evident. And when something is self-evident, it needs no explanation. You need, I, 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 you know, I, I don't need to prove anything to anyone because they themselves already know. Because it is abundantly clear to everyone and no one is without excuse. This is what God said. While creation is not sufficient to save you, it is abundantly sufficient to condemn you. Because you know that there is a God. This thing can come by Zeus. In a false God. Can pantheism give an account of creation? Because they believe that the universe is God. Everything is God to them. Can the theistic world be given account? No, oh no. Which is best? The theistic worldview. Sean Carl talk about his naturalism will discover the answer to this question, this philosophical, metaphysical, meta-scientific question. Is scientific naturalism will eventually give answer to this question? Never. Not even if he had the chance to live in eternity. Even given infinity of time, he would never ever able to scientifically empirically and naturalistically answer this question why am i here? what's my purpose what's my goal in life what's my dream to become what i want to become mr sean carl come on now you're a wonderful theoretical physicist and you come up with different mathematical equation to try to explain certain phenomena you see within the universe. And a lot of time you guys miss the mark. And you have the hubris and the audacity and the arrogance to say... There's nothing outside the universe. Oh, you know that. You have no, you have no omniscience. In order for you to make a statement, man, Mr. Scientist, you have to have omniscience. You have to know every crevice and corner of the universe. You know very well. That natural, the natural physical law that you boast in, boast about all the time, cannot even go to the beginning of the quantum of the um, cosmological Big Bang. Can't even go outside of it. And a lot of scientists know that there are things out beyond the universe, but they just can't put their finger in it. They know that there's something metaphysical beyond it. But they can't put their hand on it. And some will go as far as to say 
the metaphysical thing beyond the universe is some unknown mathematical law that is not physical in a mathematical law it's not physical it's an abstraction but I believe nonetheless so just why not just say God why not just say God mathematical laws we are have we talk to you about it can't do anything it is causally impotent mathematical law just describe when you put two to two and two together it's equal four it can put ten dollar bill in in your pocket and then take another ten dollar bill and put it in your pocket for it to be and then say oh twenty dollars in my pocket here the law of mathematics just put it in my pocket right here Man, I appreciate that. Law of mathematics. Big up. That's not the word, man. L laws just describe the phenomena of the universe. Oh, God put in place to work. The law of gravity. All of these, all of these laws come, came from the lawgiver. God himself. Put these things in the universe to by them the universe you know work and you we can predict mathematical make mathematical prediction because the universe is created orderly and law like and if this intellectual property of the infinite mind of god didn't operate on a regular on a, on a, on a cause and effect basis and uh, we could never make prediction if it was chaotic and and uh you know, stochastic. We couldn't. We couldn't make. There would be no. There. There would be no chemistry. There would be no physics. There would be no theoretical physicist. You see what I'm saying, man? The reason why we have science, the reason why we have chemistry, the reason why we have physics is because a God that is rational and logical and created all these laws create the universe and put these laws within the universe to govern the universe on a regular basis that's why we can expect um we can we can predict certain things because of the regularity of these laws that work on a on a cause and effect basis we know we can we can predict certain things and uh, even sean say that himself by using mathematical laws mathematics and all of these things and that's what physicists do that's what they do they use maths because maths is the language of the universe so they use maths to predict things and and can tell you certain things and so forth they they, they can predict uh, 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 like the Higgs boson where they call it the god particle for how many years until they discover it they say so anything that is not intellectually created that was that was before the universe there was a, a will and a mind and a speech because God said let there there was the, 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 the as John Lennox said the, the universe as a as a, a is a word-based universe it came into being by the word of God himself energy came into being by God matter come into being by God. Time itself was created by God. None of these things was some kind of chance event. A matter of fact, I said chance can't create anything. Chance is but it's just mathematical probability. They can't it has no causal power. Time has no causal power. So I don't know why people think you need trillion of here for something to be. It has no causal power. As one person rightly put, as I said before, time is a spectator, not a creator. We going to we I'm 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 going to do some 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 series on some of these books, and I'm going to deal with this lady again. Sabina, Sabine, has some failure. And some more of Sean Carl and, and others. 
the universe has a purpose. The Bible tells you that God gave the universe a purpose and, the, and God is going to destroy this universe and create a new one. See the power? But scientists don't believe that. This universe will come to some kind of heat that are some tragic, catastrophic billions of years in the, billions of year in the future. So billions of years in the future, there will be no universe. And some believe that it will die and then start another universe. They have all kind of hypotheses, man. I'm telling you. They have all kind. The imagination is so vivid and so surrealistic. You know? They come up with all kind of stuff. But my God tell me that he will destroy this creation as we see it is. Right now, he will going to destroy it. And he's going to create a new universe. Different laws, different everything. Different laws, different everything. And this, I would... I, I, a lot of scientists who, be, who became Christian are going to witness that creation event. And they're going to spend the rest of their life with God learning new things and all of these things that they never dream of, can, could never ever dream of. The master creator going to teach them throughout eternity. <laughs> Come on, man. Common sense. Common sense, man. A lot of things just take this. Some of these guys and and uh, talking about oh, uh, what a awful critical thinking and all of these things. <laughs> guys, every day you're involved in critical thinking, man. Every day. <laughs> You couldn't exist. You couldn't. You couldn't manage your life without critical thinking. So, people, we gonna conclude here. Uh, going to some more stuff again, science and universe. I want to deal with the anthropic principle. I love quantum. I love quantum mechanics. I, I, I do some reading and listen a lot of. These scientists talk about it. It's a fascinating subject. You know. These guys are. Uh, you know in spite of these guys say some things. But I said. They, 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 they allow us to see. And understand a lot about nature. Matter and a lot of stuff. You know. A lot of stuff. So. We, 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 we respect them for that. So without them. We wouldn't understand a lot about the universe. How the universe works and the different laws in the universe and stuff like that. The different atomic um, uh, atomic principle and particles and all of these things, you know. So, people, subscriber, everybody, man, viewers who are looking right now, and subscribe, man, subscribe and let us reason. Come, let us reason together. You know, let us reason. Don't emote like those guys. They can't reason. They have no capacity to reason. All they do is emote. You know, the emote full of coprolalia. <laughs> yeah? They can't, they can't argue. They can't. You have to be humble, relax, chill, chill, man, you're, 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 on, you're on, everybody not going to agree on everything, you have to respect people when they disagree with you and stuff like that, just chill out, man, and be yourself, <laughs> so take care, everybody, another day, another time. Tell your friend and your mother and your brother and your sister and your cousin to come in, man, and let us reason together. It's Cairo. Out.